so glad you guys are finally here. Whether you're here in the pews or if you're here at home, um, we're just excited to worship with you. Um, today, we just pray that you open up your hearts, your arms, your whatever, and just let the Lord bless you. He wants to bless you, and he wants to receive our praise. And so we want to do that this morning. So we're glad you're here. If you were a guest for our first time, maybe on our Facebook Live, we want to encourage you to go to our website, take things out about us. And um, our website is builtinbc.org. Um, if you are um, one of our own and you are used to giving us prayer requests, we're still on paperless, so please mail it uh, to the office right there. Um, the next slide, actually. Um, yeah, so just mail it to builtinbc at comcast.net, and Margaret will take care of that. And um, also, we still have some Zoom Bible studies going on. Our ladies' Bible study will meet starting this Tuesday, so that's great. Um, Pam's excited for that. And um, the men have already been meeting on Saturdays. And so we're getting there, guys, right? Just stay in the Word, and, and let's just worship Him. also want to let you know our Care Net bottles when you exit today. You can drop them off or grab one if you want to. And we will collect those Father's Day in just a couple more weeks. All right. Are y'all ready to stand up and praise? Stand with us, would you? And let's praise the Lord. Let's see
before that it felt good from this as well. And uh, Becca, you check our AC. That's the one thing I forgot. We're used to 10 people. <laughs> Are y'all ready for this? I do know.
Let us go to the house of the Lord. Don't you think that's great? I mean, it's great that we're here. I apologize that we have to be so far uh, apart, but we're, we're trying to do the best we can in regards to this. And, uh, you know, I had my own ideas of how we should do this. I told Misty that what we need to do is put six foot long sticks at the end of each aisle and then have everybody twirl around and if you hit somebody, somebody has to move. And she said, no, that's not a good idea. And then, I, then somebody suggested, well, how about six foot uh, uh, beach noodles, those, those pool noodles? And Missy goes, no, I can, that, 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 that would just end up bad. So uh, we, we did it this way. I, I hope you will be patient with us as we try to get people as close together as possible. Hey, uh, we have a couple of prayer requests that we need to be aware of this morning. First of all, um, Nancy Glasscock was rushed to the hospital yesterday. And I uh, uh, don't know what the uh, outcome of the prognosis or anything about it. Just know that she was in a lot of pain. And uh, they, they felt so strongly about it, they called the ambulance and had her uh, uh, taken to a uh, here. So we need to be praying for her. Also, Stephanie, uh, uh, we know you're out there and um, that you've had your operation this week and we, we want to let you know that we're going to be praying for you. We have a number of children that have been born and some who are ready to be born. And uh, uh, Ava Marie, it's great to see you in this world. Maddie, uh, it's great to see you in this world. And uh, we're looking forward to Olivia's uh, delivery. Have they chosen a name yet? Okay. Bob's a good name. <laughs> <laughs> Bob. Oh, okay. Bob. 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 And, and then, of course, Lori Carr. We're, um, um, uh, we're going to be praying for her mother as well. Can we go to Lord and prayer? <clears throat> Jesus, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you that uh, you are not remote from us. You are not distant from us. Lord, in the scheme of things, as you explain it all to us, and it makes perfect sense to us that the God of the universe is close by. And we just thank you that we don't have to yell across the room. We don't have to need to make an appointment. We can come to you in the closeness of our hearts and minds. We can come to you in the closeness of what's going on in our lives and sit with you and talk to you about what's going on. Father, we do pray for Nancy and we just thank you that you have sustained her for so long. And we continue to ask to be with her as she uh, uh, goes through this latest difficulty. We ask that you be with her. Father, we pray for Stephanie and we ask that you help her to recover from her, uh, uh, her surgery this week. Lord, that you bring her back to us in health. We pray for some of our friends and our families who are in nursing homes, who are in uh, remote, um, uh, are uh, by themselves this morning because they can't get out. We ask that you be with them. Lord, let them know that uh, you love them, uh, whether they're here at Milton Baptist, whether they are in their homes, that you have this undying and un, uh, incredible love for them. Lord, let them know that uh, even sometimes when they go down to North Carolina and they're in sorrow because of the loss of a friend, you are the one who sticks closer to them than a brother. And we just thank you, Lord. Well, we continue to uh, ask you to uh, be with us as we uh, seek wisdom, as we seek to praise you this morning. Lord, continue to uh, direct us and guide us as only you can. And we ask all these things in a humble way of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So for all these weeks I've been talking to the camera, so I'm going to talk to like you and you and all of this. It's so great to have people in the church and to hear you singing. It's been really different having just the 10 of us every single week and we're just kind of talking to ourselves so welcome to those of you that are here and welcome to those of you that are going to come soon we're glad you're here 
I want to read a Bible story to you from the book of Luke, chapter 17. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. Leprosy is a highly contagious skin disease. And while COVID-19 is not a skin disease, it is highly contagious. So this story really made me think of what we have been up against the last few weeks. Because these men wanted to talk to Jesus, but they kept their distance because that was the rule. Kind of like we've been keeping our distance from each other. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. He didn't even, he didn't even approach them. He didn't even touch them. And he definitely didn't heal them. But this is what's so cool. They're back there and he's up here. And he's like, just go. Go to the priest. And none of them stopped or hesitated or said, what are you talking about? We're going to be laughed out of town. They all turned and believed him. And as the Bible says, as they went, they were cleansed. The Bible talks a lot about faith. And all ten of these men all had faith that what this man who they never met before was saying to them was going to happen. That's amazing. But one of them, when he saw he was healed, he turned around and came back. And he praised God in a loud voice. He threw himself down at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. That's another story that Samaritans were not the kind of people that Jews wanted to associate with. Jesus was a Jew. And he knew this guy was a Samaritan. But he let him fall at his feet and be really grateful. And then Jesus said to this guy who's down there, uh, Were not all ten of you cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we could take from this story. But the one thing is, if we have faith, it doesn't matter really how strong the faith is. God, God will heal us. But he really wants us to come back. And he wants us to say, thank you. And so I'm really glad that today is our first day that we get to come to church. And I'm really glad that we can go out in our community and we can go shopping or go to concerts with just 50 people. Or we could go to um, the lake. We went um, paddle boarding this past week and one of my children fell in, but we won't name any names. But I feel really thankful that my family has been fortunate for the last 13 weeks to have food and shelter and clothing and high-speed internet and Netflix, and we haven't even had a hard time. But, you know, there's a lot of people who have worked really hard and their lives haven't changed at all because they've been on the front lines this whole time. So I want us to start thinking of how we can be thankful as we go back into our society. So if you're a kid today, your handy little children's sermon bag has some thank you cards inside. I have a lot of my special props today. So we have today a doctor's and nurse's thank you coloring sheet. And also in your nice little bag, we have a grocery worker coloring sheet. And so for the next few weeks, I want our focus to be on saying thank you to the different essential workers that have done these great Things called going to work when it's really scary and really hard, but they know your job is really important. So we can, if you're here today and you're not a kid, I have a bunch of the bags available at the back. Anybody can color these. And then you have some choices. You can take them to the grocery store the next time you go, or take them to the doctor if you're going, or else you can give them to me and leave them on the table where you're gonna put your baby bottles on your way out the door, and we'll collect them. Next week's thank you cards are gonna be for first responders, which is convenient because we're collecting items for the first responders basket. So same thing, you can stop by your local fire and rescue station, or you can just leave them here when they're colored, and we will drop them off. And on the back, you could write your own note. We just really wanna have an attitude of thankfulness because 
We could still be at home where this pandemic could go on for like years, but we're here and we're able to come out and do all these really awesome things that we haven't done for a long time. So I don't want to be like those other lepers who are like, oh, well, you know, now I'm fine and I'm going to go to the restaurant and it's going to be great. How about we stop and say thank you? And we need to say thank you to the Lord. But we also need to say thank you to people because this is a tangible way that we can honor God by stopping and saying thank you. So it's two different things. I just want to be clear. We want to have an attitude of thankfulness for the Lord, but we also want to take some time over the next couple of weeks and say thank you to the people in our community who have made some sacrifices and possibly risked their health because they know that their job is important. Also, please. Check out our church's YouTube channel by simply searching Bealton Baptist Church. You'll see Steve and Beachner, you'll see Misty and Pastor Bob. But there's also some fun children's moments. This week on Wednesday, for our children's moment, we're going to be talking about, you're not going to believe it, saying thank you. And we're also going to be talking about ways that you can occupy yourselves this summer because it's not a normal summer because you've already been out of school for 13 weeks and you've got 10 more to go. So this week, moms and dads, it's not for preschool. It's for big kids. And we're going to talk about ways you can have your kids have an attitude of thankfulness with five exciting activities they can do at home. So search the church on YouTube and we'll see you next time. This is our time of giving, and there are different ways to give nowadays. If you are here, present, there are uh, plates at the back, at the front and at the back, um, that you can drop your check in or your money in. Um, and also, you can give online and bill pay at your normal bank. Um, and just go online and make a bill pay payment to Bealton Baptist Church. Or you can go to Venmo app, and at the Venmo app, you have to go to at Bealton Baptist dash church to donate in that way. But also, you can do it the old-fashioned way, which is mail and check into the office at Fields and Baptist Church, P.O. Box 50, Fields and Virginia, 22712. Amen. I think it's time to worship the Lord again. How about you guys? Um, during this time, we've had a chance to learn some new songs. You probably have heard them, too, on the radio. And this one has just really spoken to my heart. Last time we did it, I think you heard Rachel do it. <clears throat> but goodness of God, would you just sing this with us? I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held by your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will see. Oh, my life, you have been faithful. 
special guest that I want you to watch on the video before Pastor Bob comes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your understanding. Remember the Lord in all you do, and He will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. And no particular verse, but we just pray that this move goes according to your will, dear Lord, and that uh, we're going to remain friends with all the friends we had at DVC, and we will be back up uh, occasionally, and we will pop in and uh, come to service. So uh, we just so grateful for the loving family that we've had at DVC for the last 13 or 14 years, ever how long we've been there. that name and acknowledge that name 
before my Father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Jesus, after his introduction, begins this section by pointing out that this church, this church at Sardis, has a good reputation. People looking from the outside into this place see it as being quite good. Perhaps it was a large gathering. It certainly wasn't a building. We didn't have church buildings at that time. Perhaps meetings were consistent. Perhaps they had important people who had decided to come to this place. Or perhaps they just had a good relationship with the city around them. If we were to transfer this thought and think about today's church, perhaps the church would have a big building and it would be seen as doing great things in the community around it. It had a good reputation in the eyes of the community. But remember, reputation isn't everything. Sometimes it matches reality. Sometimes somebody's reputation matches the reality of who they are, but all too often it doesn't. Reputation, in many ways, is just an image of what somebody else thinks you are, not necessarily who you are. People often talk about the importance of maintaining your reputation. Fathers and mothers think about telling their children, and they tell their children, hey, maintain a good reputation. Churches get caught up in their reputation. If you don't believe that, all you need to do is take a look at all the outlines of all the church consultants that come into churches and tell them what's wrong with the churches and what they need to do to have an impact on their community. These church consultants will come in and encourage churches to find out what their reputation is in the community around them. But Jesus says, reputation isn't everything. And in fact, in this letter to the seven churches, where Jesus is very distinct and saying exactly who he is at the beginning of this section to Sardis. He is telling them that he is the, the, the one in control. He is the one who birthed this church. Jesus says to them, your rep is great. Your soul is right, lifeless. You have a reputation of being alive. You're dead. The Greek word used for dead here is necros, and it forms the basis of uh, when, when uh, a doctor says there, that uh, part of your body is necrotic. It means that it's dead, it's died. Um, flesh has been worn away and it's dead. It means that, that it's like a funeral parlor, the person in the funeral parlor. I would imagine that when these words were read to the congregation at Sardis, I really believed it probably shocked them. Us? Dead? I think if, if, if we were in the same situation and we got a letter from Jesus and he said, your, um, your, your church is dead, I think we would be taking a back. I think we would have said, what? What's going on here? But that's the thing about spiritual deadness. When you are spiritually dead, you don't realize you are dead. In the book of Judges, it talks about Samson and how after his uh, hair was cut off, which represented how God uh, worked through Samson. It said, he did not know that the Spirit of the Lord has departed. 
And in these situations when a church dies, when it is dead, all too often they continue to do the things that they're supposed to do all on the outside. And everybody says, oh man, what a great church. You guys are great. You do such great work. You have a great feeding ministry. You do everything so great. But in the end, the church is dead. And Jesus is reminding the church at Sardis that the church, that God's church, is not built on reputation. It is built on relationship. And without that relationship, a church might as well be a rerun from 11 series TV shows. It might as well just be a rerun. Wise men tell individuals to be careful about focusing too much on your reputation. They say, be more concerned with your character than your reputation. If I take care of my character, my reputation will care for me, Dwight Moody said. Reputation comes out of who we are, who we are at our base. And Jesus says the same thing to us, that who you are at your base is based on the relationship you have with me. Jesus says, take care of your relationship with me and your reputation will take care of itself. Now I think there's five signs of a dead church walking. And all five speak to this issue of relationship. All of them in some way speak to this issue of relationship. The first thing that you see in a dead church when a dead church is walking is that prayer becomes an afterthought. When faith ceases to pray, it ceases to live. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything. And so often we think that the emphasis in this verse is on anxious, but it's not. It's on prayer, but in every situation, every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Spiritual life and prayer must go hand in hand. You can't say that you have a relationship with someone if you don't talk to them. You know, I think that would be peculiar in a marriage, don't you think? Oh, we're married, we have a relationship, but we haven't talked in about five or six years. That would seem weird. But yet, we go so long without talking. And prayer is something that should be primary to us when we uh, are in a church. Prayer is not an afterthought. It is primary. Second thing that you see in a dead church walking is that sin is excused and holiness is minimized. We come up with all these euphemisms because we don't like that word S-I-N. It feels so uncomfortable. We are mistakers in the hands of an angry God. We are um, uh, challenged with things in our lives. And it makes us feel a little more comfortable that we don't have to deal with those words. The Bible says, all have sinned, all have sinned, all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. Sin is something that we need to grasp in our lives. We need to be working on in our lives. We're not perfect. And nobody calls you to perfection. But there's sin that needs to be worked on in our lives. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear Him. 
the Bible says, God does not like sin. The third thing that you see in a walking dead church is when love becomes just a concept. One of uh, Jesus' last commandments to his disciples was to love one another, to lean into this concept of love, to make sure that you are trying to love people that quite frankly the rest of the world may see as unlovable. Love is an emotion, certainly. But love, as Jesus looks at it, is a choice that we make. It's a commitment to one another. It is a desire to show empathy to other people around us. It is to love people in spite of their weaknesses, in spite of their failings, in spite of their trouble, uh, tr troubles. True love is a choice. And it goes beyond just feeling like you'd like to do it. In a dead, dying, walking dead church, truth is no longer valued. Truth is no longer valued. Opinion take precedent. I, I was reading just this last couple of weeks a, a, a story uh, it was actually a book, and, and it dealt with living in a post-truth society. Living in a post-truth society where everybody's opinion is just as valid as anybody else's opinion. The Bible tells us in John 8, 32, that you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. There are truths out there, and Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And we can anchor our lives in that. And the fifth thing that ushers in the dead church walking is when re reputation replaces relationships. When reputation replaces relationship, when you start worrying about how we look to the world outside vice doing what God has called you to do, everything that we do as a body of believers springs up from our relationship with Jesus Christ. Our desire to forgive springs up from our relationship with Him. Our desire to love because He has first loved us springs up from that, uh, that relationship. Our desire to see how people be, are, are, are thinking and, and be empathetic about what they're uh, thinking springs up from that fountain that we call Jesus Christ. And it is through that relationship that we are anchored and it is through that relationship that we become whole. A church that forgets that is doomed. That's Bob. I think you're getting a little intense. But you, you, Pastor Bob, this is our first service back in a couple of months and you're getting a little intense. Jesus was kind of intense. Remember in the Gospels where he told people who were praying and fasting and doing things for him. He said, depart from me. I never knew you. What he is saying is you're doing all the right things but you're not doing them in relationship with me. It is not the do that we makes us who we are. It's the done, what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. A couple of years ago, I guess it was about a year ago, I took 
Stephen over to get his learner's permit over at uh, the DMV down in Stafford. And it was an exciting time. Uh, we got there, and it was so exciting to stand 45 minutes in that line outside the building waiting to get in. It was just so enthusiastic. It just kind of bubbled all out, out of me. We, 45 minutes, we were outside. And then we get to a desk. And she goes, can I see your papers? <laughs> so we showed her the things that we had. And she goes, yeah, that looks good enough. And, and so we went there. And we sat down for another two hours. And we get up to the, 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 uh, the, the window, and the guy looks at our papers, and he goes, that's not good enough. Those aren't good enough. And I got a little upset. I, 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 go, I, I showed these to the lady at the door, and she said they were okay, and now you're saying, and she, he goes, they're not good enough. And I said, boy, I really wish she would have told me at the beginning and I wouldn't have sat here for two hours. This morning, I want to let you know, I want to be the lady at the window. I want to be the lady at the front of the line who tells you your works are not good enough. It doesn't matter if you're uh, serving every day of the week, doing something for the community around you, you are not going to earn your way into heaven. Heaven is designed for people who have the right credentials. And those right credentials are a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said this when he was praying to his Father. They know you. They have an intimate relationship with you. And this morning, I want to encourage you not to be one of those walking dead. Not to be one of those people who are in the church pews, but are walking dead with no relationship to God. It is the relationship, it is the intimacy, it's the ability to say, you are God, Jesus, and I am not, that makes us whole, that makes us who we are, that makes us a church of God. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly gracious Father, this is like a cold bucket of water to some people. Perhaps it's even making them mad this morning. Perhaps they're getting upset. But the reality is, Lord, that the way you look means a lot less to God than the way you relate to Him. And if you lean into the relationship that we have with Him, then those outward things will come along, the things that need to come along. God, God tells us that when the Holy Spirit comes and lives in our hearts, it compels us to do things in gratefulness and thankfulness. Don't get those things mixed up. Don't try to do good things in hopes of earning heaven. Father, I pray for that person out there today 
whether it's in our pews or in our home, that they will come and see the importance of having an intimate relationship with the God of the universe, the one who came, lived a perfect life, died on the cross for our sins, and lives forever at the right hand of his Father. Thank you.